The House Judiciary Committee gearing up for a critical vote tomorrow that will set the rules for its impeachment inquiry. Not all House Democrats are on the same page about whether to call it a full impeachment investigation. So let's discuss now. Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin is here. He sits on the House Judiciary Committee. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you joining us. You say we're in an impeachment inquiry now. Why the hes hesitation by some of your colleagues to just even call it that? Well, the Constitution doesn't really define the term, so it means different things to different people. Some people are saying investigation. Some are saying inquiry. It's very clear that we're looking at possible high crimes and misdemeanors of the president. Mm -hmm. There are not articles of impeachment that have been written up, so we're not set to vote on anything. We're still in an active investigative mode, and there are a lot of things that we can do even short of impeachment in the meantime to counter the lawlessness of this White House. If I can speak for just the, the this is a question that I get on the street, and I think it's a fair one for you because I can't really answer it for people. They say, are Democrats going to impeach a guy or not? What's with this? Well, we're investigating. We're trying to figure out, are you going to do it or not? I think that's what most people want to know. Whether they agree with we well, should be I, impeached or not, they, are you going to do it or not? It seems like another unfortunate consequence of the Trump administration is that everybody has a Trump-style attention span right now. That's really not how the Constitution works. It's not like an up or down, yes or no plebiscite, and then it's all over. This is a process where we're really investigating what is taking place. There are complicated things going on here that are simple in fact, okay? The president has converted the presidency into an instrument of self-enrichment. In Scotland and Ireland, he's spending hundreds of thousands, millions of taxpayer dollars to aid his business enterprises. He's pocketing money from foreign governments all over the world in violation of the foreign uh, emoluments clause, but it's going to be complicated. Congressman, to Congressman, to with all, all due respect, I people. understand that, as you said, and as you're going, it's complicated. So the question is are you going to do it or not? And how do you, how, and how do you answer well, the average person who doesn't have time to sit there and say, well, it's nuanced? No, no, no. Are you going to do it or not? <laughs> Well, look, our Constitution was written in the 18th century where they were a little more reflective and a little more meditative about stuff. So I know, we, but we've it's got not the 18th analyze. century. This Listen, I hate, to put you, I hate to put you on the spot like this, but this is not the 18th century. This is yeah. a, you know, 24-hour news environment. This is with, okay. with social media and Twitter and whatever, and things happen really fast. And you're talking about a guy who just does whatever he wants. And if he said he would just come out and say, yeah, I'm going to impeach him. Or, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to impeach him. You guys right. can't. Why can't you just say it? Why can't you just make up your minds? Well, because he'll say something whether or not it's right or wrong, and then he contradicts himself 20 minutes later or the next day. So we have to have more respect for the rule of law. But it doesn't matter because if everyone around him falls in line. Everyone around him falls in line, and then they eventually do what he says. And so why can't you guys decide, I mean, we're, we're not going doing into that. impeachment I, or I, not impeachment, and then get together like the Republicans do and support each other? Okay. All right, here's my clairvoyant prediction, because I understand all right. that's what all news has come down to, okay? I have introduced, uh, uh, I've got a resolution, which I'm going to introduce, to have the House of Representatives disapprove of every foreign government payment that Donald Trump has pocketed from Saudi Arabia or Indonesia or the United Arab Emirates ever since he came into office from the Trump office towers or the golf courses or the Trump International Hotel in Washington, which I call the Washington Emolument. We're going to disapprove all of them, I hope, and I hope that we're going to demand that the president turn over all of his ill-gotten gains under the Constitution over to the U.S. Treasury. Right. I believe that we're going to do that. Now, that's something I'm willing to predict because I'm throwing <laughs> myself into it. I think that's something everybody can agree to, and I think the Republicans should agree to it, too. We've mm -hmm. never had a president, Republican or Democrat, who's done what this president has done in terms of turning the office of the presidency into a for-profit enterprise. Okay, I get so what you're saying. So I know saying. I'm not Listen. speaking to the talking points of impeachment here or there, but that's something that I think we can I, do right away, real Congressman, soon. Congressman, I don't mean to beat you up. short of impeachment. I'm just speaking to the frustration of people, the questions of people on the street. Street and and, I, and that I get. I that, feel their frustration. Yeah, yeah. I get you. So listen, um, committee. I, I, I understand where people are coming from. 
Go on. Uh, it's a big country. We have lots of political subcultures out there. We got to keep our Democratic caucus together, but we're moving everything in the right direction. We're unified in wanting to counter the lawlessness, the okay. criminality, and the corruption coming out of 1600 Pennsylvania. Let's look ahead, Congressman, to um, tomorrow's Democratic debate, shall we? You like Elizabeth Warren, but haven't endorsed her yet. Do you expect fireworks between Warren and Biden tomorrow? Well, I think is the, the field shrinks and there's a smaller group of people just by the nature of the debate format. There are going to be much more direct collisions on public policy. But Joe Biden um, seems to be very gentlemanly in these exchanges. And um, Elizabeth Warren has really been focused on the issues and she doesn't get into mm -hmm. the. Uh, ad hominem personality attacks. So I think we're going to have a very lively and vigorous exchange of views. The main thing is to keep everybody together. And I'm trying to emphasize to all the candidates, we are now not just the progressive and the liberal party. We're the conservative party, too. Mm -hmm. We want to conserve the land, the air, the water, the climate system, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, Social Security, Medicare, Affordable Care Act. It is the White House which now wants to wreck everything. They're destroying everything. So we've got to run as the conservative party in 2020 in addition to everything else. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on and taking the, the questions. We appreciate having you on every single time. I will take the slings and arrows for you, Don. I appreciate your having me. Patriot Star Wide